Hey guys, how's it going? You know, I have ADD and I am constantly losing things. I lose my car keys, which are usually in my pocket the entire time after about 15 minutes of um, you know going through the entire house. I'll misplace my laptop, video game controllers, TV remotes. But one thing I don't have trouble finding is files on my Linux machine. And the reason for that is because I have the find command at my disposal. This is something that I use quite often. And anytime I want to remember what, you know, where I saved a file, I just use the find command to locate it. And yeah, I do need to know what I probably called it, but generally speaking, I have a naming convention that stays the same anyway. But the find command is just one of those things that I find that I use um, quite often. And I'm going to show you guys how it works in a somewhat high level. It's a command that has a lot of different options. But I'm going to give you guys some examples of the find command because I think it's definitely a command that you should know. So let's go ahead and check it out. Back here in my terminal, we're going to go ahead and use the find command. Now, I actually used the command in a previous video, uh, even though we didn't actually have a formal discussion about it yet. And it was in regards to finding a file with star.log and then, you know, basically omitting standard error. And here's that command, or at least one of them. And I mentioned that in that video, and now we're going to have actual discussion about it, the find command. I'm going to start my search in the root file system, or the beginning. I want to search by name. I want to find any file, star.log. And the concept of that video is we were talking about streams and redirection, things like that. I wanted to take standard error, which is designated by two. And I want to just dump it into this file right here. Of course, I could just do slash dev null, which is another example I gave, which basically means I'm going to run this find command. It's going to give me all the results. But if there's an error, so for example, if I was to just not do the redirect here, you see a bunch of errors. But with that redirect, with the two, and I'll just uh, make sure you guys can see that, it's redirecting standard error to dev null, which is purgatory. Anything that goes in there is uh, never seen from nor heard, of, heard from again, kind of like the crack in between the car seat and the uh, center console in your car. You know, cookie falls down there. You'll never see that cookie until you go to trade the car in. That's what dev null is like. Anything that goes in there is basically gone forever. And that was great because I don't want those errors. I don't want to see those errors and it puts them there. But that is kind of underselling the whole concept of the find command because that allows me to find files. In this case, I want to find files that end in, in .log. And of course, these files qualify. And if I was looking for the xorg.0.log, for example, well, there's my answer. If I was looking for that file, there it is. So now I know where that file actually is. So I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen. And let's look at some additional examples. So let's take a look at my current working directory. I have some folders there. So I can use the find command in my current working directory. So I'm not going to give it a path. I mean, I could do home J, which is where I am. If I do PWD, you see that's where I am, but that's not what I'm gonna do because I, I just wanna find from my current working directory. So I don't need to give it a path. I wanna look by name. So I'm gonna search by name. And I want to find any directory that's called music. I'll press enter. And of course, we only have that one item there. You already knew that's what was going to happen. But in its simplest form, that's the find command. You can simply change directory into, um, you know, the directory that has what you think it is that you need. So I can do slash var and I could do find by name. And I want to search for a folder named log. And you know, it's going to show me that right here because there is var log. Of course I get the errors because you know, standard error. And I don't have permission to view those directories or those areas of the file system. So it's gonna give me a permission denied. Again, I could redirect standard error. I'm not gonna do that again. You already know how to do that. But I got my answer log, but we could do a little bit better though. I'm gonna go ahead and um, lower that here. We could just recall that command. I wanna search by name. I'm searching for anything that's you know has log in the name, essentially, or actually is exactly called log, which is what I'm doing there. But what if I want to search for a ter certain type of thing? So I'm going to do dash type, D for directory, and press enter. Now the results aren't going to look any different here because we already you know we already had results that qualified as that anyway. 
But what I could do, you know, this is straight the opposite. I could do dash type and then F for file. And again, I get the permission denied errors, but I do not actually get the actual result that I was looking for. Clear the screen. So with that example, I gave you dash type. So F for file, D for directory, dash name. I want to search for something that's named log. So I went ahead and type that in there and that's what I got. Now I'm going to use the actual two and then greater than and then dev null because I want to basically just narrow it down to the actual re result that I care about. I need to change this to D because I do know that the log directory is a directory. I forgot where it is. Um, honestly, if I just did ls, it'd be right there, of course. Um, var log is actually located in var and you can actually see it. But you know, the example is just to show you how it works. And I think that's a pretty easy example to show you how the find command works. Find type directory name log and then of course I'm redirecting standard error. We'll get back to the video shortly, but I'd like to take a moment to thank my sponsor Linode. Linode makes it easy and affordable to host your app, site, or service in the cloud. Unlike entry-level hosting services that only offer pre-configured servers, Linode is your step up to powerful, fast, and fully configurable cloud computing. Linode offers many of the top Linux distributions that you can install in one of their 10 worldwide data centers. With server plans starting at just $5 plus no hidden fees or surprise overages, Linode offers no-nonsense hosting at a price you can afford. Check out the URL at the bottom of the screen to receive $20 in credit toward your very own Linode instance. I definitely recommend you check out Linode. It's also the platform I use personally and I couldn't be happier with it. Be sure to check out Linode and let's get back to the video. So let's take a look at another example. So I'm gonna recall the command and I'm gonna change this a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is change this to F and I'm gonna give it a path because I kinda of wanna make this make more sense because you don't need to be in the directory that you wanna search from. I could be in my home directory and just give it a place. So I'm gonna search from slash var and then what I'm gonna do is a type F because I wanna search for files in this case. The name doesn't have to be exactly log. A lot of times it could be best practice just to put quotes around it. But I want anything that ends in log that's in the var directory, whoops. And I want to redirect standard error to dev null. I'll press enter. Let's see what would happen. And here we get the actual output that we would expect. But the problem here is that if there's anything after log, it's not going to show that. So let's adjust that command a little bit more and put an asterisk here at the end. And sometimes when you give it these, um, when you do globbing or type, you know, strings here, you got to put this in quotes. Otherwise, in some versions of bash, that's not going to work very well. So let's just press enter here and see what we have. So we don't actually have anything additional because this is a freshly installed system. Now what will happen is generally these will rotate these files and when they do they'll have like a dot one or a dot gz if they're compressed. So you'll see more and having the star at the end will make sure that you see everything but because this is a freshly installed system, I actually installed it today, then this is all that I'm going to get. Now we do see the log rotate dot timer here, which wouldn't have shown up before. And we also see the dot old file, but normally you'll see a lot more here as far as old log files that end in more than just log. But the example is I was able to search for more than just log. So that's awesome. I was, I'm able to search for files, but that's not really all we want to do. I mean, now at this point, you know how to search for directories, you know how to search for files. So, how would we find files that were modified a certain amount of time ago, maybe within the last seven days? So I'll use find and I want to look in var log. I want to know about log files that were modified within the last seven days. Now generally that's going to be all the log files because things are constantly running, but it's just an example. So I'm going to start my search in var log. That's where I'm going to begin. And then what I'm going to do is do type. So dash type F for file. I only want files. I don't want to see directories. So we'll add that and then I'll do dash name star dot log. We already know what's going to happen because, you know, we only have so many files anyway and the system was just set up today. But I want to limit it down to M time, you know, modified time and I'll do minus seven, which is going to show me only the files that were modified within the last seven days. Now, of course, 
that's going to give me roughly the same because we you know have files we only have so many files in there anyway and any files that weren't pre-included with the distribution or anything like that would have been modified within the last seven days because this installation of Linux hasn't even existed for more than four hours, let alone an entire day or seven days. But if you're looking for files modified within a certain amount of time, well, that's probably something that you would want to know how to do. And this command will allow you to do that. Now, one practical use of this command in you know the real world is maybe your disk is filling up on your Linux server, so you want to find all the files that were modified within the last 30 days. Of course, you know, like I mentioned, this is a brand new installation. That's not going to be any different in our case. But on the actual server that has existed for more than 30 days, you'll probably find a fair number of files. So um, this is not the best way of clearing log files, by the way, because we want to use something like log rotate to clean this. So maybe this could be another directory and you have a bunch of files in there. It doesn't have to be var log. This is bad form, but it's just, again, just an example. But now that we can get output and we can get the last 30 days of modified files in a directory, well, what do we, what, what can we actually do with that? Well, we could also do dash exec to execute something against the results. Now be very, very careful with this because you could remove something important. In my case, I don't really care because this is just a demo machine. And if this entire distribution was um, you know, annihilated, it wouldn't be a problem because I can easily get it back. There's no data on this laptop that I actually care about. But what we could do is rm, and then we have to do the rm command, a little bit funny here. We gotta put brackets to refer to each item. and. Um, I'm not going to get into why we need to do this, but it's outside the scope of this video, which is already getting kind of long. But essentially what this allows me to do is execute the rm command against anything that it finds. Now this is a bad idea. Don't do this yourself unless you know what you're doing. But again, this is a sample machine. Now the worst that could happen probably is I won't have permission anyway because I'm not using sudo. But uh, you get the idea. This is going to confirm. So remove write prote protected file. Yes, sure, sure. Sure, it's not going to be able to do that because I don't have permission to do so. But that just goes to show you if I was to run this as root, then I would be able to do that. In fact, you know what? I'm feeling a bit daring. Let's run it as root. Again, do as I say, not as I do. I'm doing something bad, but you know what? Let's just make this fun. I'll press enter. I'll put in my password for my sudo here. And let's just look at slash var log. And we can see that basically anything that ends in dot log is wiped out. This one is still here because it ends in dot old. So if I was to add a star here at the end, let's see what happens. And sure enough, that file is gone as well. But a command like this, you know, because I know I'm, I'm showing you something that's kind of risky and, and you shouldn't do this on your end. So you might be wondering, well, what is a situation I would use this in? So a situation you might use this in is if you have an application log directory. It's very common if you have a server, you have an application running all the time, that application is logging to its specific directory. And maybe it's filling up with log files because there's a problem and it's filling up the disk. And you want to still retain 30 days worth of logs. But anything after that, then you want to go ahead and wipe that out. So that'll get you some disk space back. Now, of course, there's better ways of handling getting disk space than clearing log files, because log files could be very useful. But that's just a hypothetical example you could use. Any directory that's filling up with files you don't care about, or if you want to prune files and delete files that are older than a certain amount of time, then the find command will allow you to do that. It allows you to find files, and once you find them, you can use dash exec to have a command run against them, which I'm going to leave it up to you to think of examples you can use with exec to go ahead and uh, you know pair that with the find command. Let me know what you've come up with in the comments below. And again, be very careful, especially when you're removing files. I'm not responsible if you destroy your company's file server. So there you go. That was a high level overview of the find command, which is extremely useful, indispensable for me. And I hope that was helpful for you guys. So I will have new videos on my channel very soon. Stay tuned. In the meantime, um, let me know your favorite usage of the find command or any other command that you have learned 
recently or you think is indispensable for you and just throw that in the comments below and let's have a discussion on Linux commands. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.